I didn't know what else to do. Like, I wasn't hearing a lot of good things. Rihanna has spoken in the past about the day that Jay-Z signed her to Def Jam Recordings. Quotes from her interviews about that epic moment in the music industry have recently resurfaced. And because of some of the things that she said have aged really badly, people are now looking at them in a whole new light. And it sounds like the day that was meant to be one of the happiest of her life could have actually been one of the worst. So let's set the scene of what went down that day at the offices of Def Jam. It was 2005 and Rihanna was just a 16 year old girl who never really left her home country of Barbados before. All of a sudden, she had a meeting with one of the most powerful men in the music industry, 33-year-old Jay-Z. He was the newly appointed CEO and president of the record label. It would have been super intimidating to say the least. She must have been terrified. In a 2007 interview with The Guardian, Rihanna confessed that she was nervous and very shy, adding that she was cold the entire time. Obviously, she knew what a big deal Jay-Z was. She admitted that she could barely even look at him at first because she was so starstruck. There was definitely a serious power imbalance going on, and Jay-Z had something to offer her that she'd been dreaming of since she was a little girl, a music career. Business Insider reported that according to the book, The Song Machine, it was a record producer named Evan Rogers who first discovered Rihanna while on vacation in Barbados. He explained that what made Rihanna really special was that she had the drive to be a pop star. Evan said that desire, more than any inborn talent, is what fans will connect to, and that is what record men look for in a new artist. It's the one thing they can't manufacture. Luckily for Rihanna, Jay-Z must have recognized that, and he did everything in his power to make sure that she signed with Def Jam that day. Like enforcing a questionable method of negotiation and using some creepy words of persuasion to help guarantee that it would happen. Atlanta Black Star released an article about how a clip of Rihanna recounting the experience at Def Jam started making the rounds on social media recently. The clip is from the Tyra Banks show, and in it, a teenage Rihanna quotes something that Jay-Z told her, which to modern day ears, sounds more like a threat than a compliment. The adult man reportedly told the then 16-year-old girl in his office that there were only two ways to leave there, either through the door with a signed deal or through the window. And they were on the 29th floor. And on top of that, they were locked in the room. That's right, both Rihanna and Jay-Z have shared that the door of the president's office that they were in was locked. In her interview with The Guardian, Rihanna said that they locked me into the office till 3 a.m. We didn't let her leave the office. Someone commented on an Instagram post about the signing incident and wrote that the ultimatum that Jay-Z gave Rihanna was super inappropriate. They said, now imagine you have a 16 year old daughter and an older man said this to her, man or woman, would you be okay with it? The person added that if they had a daughter, they wouldn't tolerate that. And anyone who saw that kind of behavior and stood behind it was part of the problem. Another commentator wrote that it was time to start blaming parents. They claimed that parents got away with not being around the teenagers while this type of stuff was happening. Atlanta Blackstar pointed out that in his MTV interview, Jay-Z failed to share how many people were around during Rihanna's audition at Def Jam, or if there were other people present when he had her locked in his office until the early hours of the morning. I'm not trying to suggest that something really dark happened that day. I don't think Rihanna would be laughing about it as she told the story if she had a bad experience. She told The Guardian that she was flattered by Jay-Z's comments about not being able to leave until she'd sign, but she was also really young at the time and he was in a position of power, so his words do sound a lot more threatening and inappropriate than she might've realized back then. Maybe at the time, questionable stories like that flew under the radar more. It was still before the hashtag Me Too movement. And now with the Diddy scandal going on, the world is revisiting power play behavior that rich, famous men got away with in the past. One story that the public was ready to believe was the rumor that Jay-Z and his young protege were having an affair. You probably remember hearing that around the time that Rihanna really blew up back in 2007, there were whispers that Jay-Z was cheating on Beyonce with her. The Guardian reported that Rihanna spoke openly about the gossip at the time. She blamed it on the affiliation she had with Def Jam's then CEO. She said, being a female and being on his label and having a close business relationship. At first it was funny, then it was frustrating. Rihanna went on to explain that it got really intense and people just weren't letting up. She added that the media then turned it into a beef between her and Beyonce, which she labeled as crazy. People assumed that Beyonce knew about the affair and even referred to it in her song, Ring the Alarm. Her dad and manager at the time, Matthew Knowles, had to release a public statement clarifying that the song was not about Rihanna. It wasn't until years later that we found out how the rumor of the affair first got started. A shocking revelation about this supposed cheating scandal came out in a celebrity biography by J. Randall Tarabarelli, titled Becoming Beyonce, The Untold Story. 
According to a report by the New York Daily News, the author claimed that the rumor and the consequential secret breakup were the fault of Rihanna's ex-publicist, Jonathan Hay. Jonathan later admitted to Inside Edition that it was all a publicity stunt. He alleged that it came out of desperation to help break Rihanna's first single, Ponder Replay. He claimed, it was reckless and I didn't think it was going to work. I was just throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what would stick. Jonathan also revealed that he eventually apologized to Jay-Z and Beyonce and the whole thing was very awkward. He also told the Daily News that he didn't think it would be the big story that it became. But seeing Beyonce on the cover of the biography and knowing that people were profiting from speculations and opinions about her really turned his stomach. Jonathan confessed that he felt ashamed that he was even talking about it and he just wanted to put the rumor to rest once and for all. I mean, it's honestly unbelievable that he even tried that. Rihanna was still a minor when the allegations first came out. She was 17 years old. Not only did it affect Jay-Z's reputation and his relationship, but it also painted Jonathan's own client as a homewrecker. Though the famous rapper denied the rumored affair between him and Rihanna, he has admitted that he's made mistakes in his marriage with Beyonce. In an honest interview he did with David Letterman, Jay-Z confessed that he did something that he had no business doing and that he regretted it per The Hollywood Reporter. He shared that he had a beautiful wife who was understanding and who knew that he was not the worst of what he'd done. Jay-Z also revealed that the couple chose to work through their problems instead of giving up on their marriage. He told David that they'd done the hard work of going to therapy and that they really put in a lot of effort. And I guess Beyonce managed to forgive him for what wrongdoings he did to her. But of course, she also made sure to let the world know that he'd hurt her by releasing her gritty album, Lemonade, where she sang about infidelity in a lot of her songs. Anyway, what do you guys think about all this? Was the way that Jay-Z went about signing Rihanna wrong in any way? Do you believe that it really was the publicist's fault that the cheating rumor started? Or was he taking the blame for someone else? Let me know in the comments below.